Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and to be honest, I wasn't even planning on doing a review for this particular episode, especially because Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, as I knew him, died already a couple weeks ago in the Crisis on Infinite Earths. But hey, once I sat down, once I started to watch this episode, I thought to myself, why not? I've reviewed so much of Arrow over the last eight years. A lot of it's been bad, if I'm being honest. I have ranted and raved on a lot of Arrow, especially probably starting from season four. Yeah, season four was terrible. Season five picked up a little bit. Season six, uh, season seven, especially the Diaz character, oh, was, was the worst. But you know what? Season 8 had some pretty cool episodes. It did. And there is a part of me that has this love-hate relationship with the Arrow TV show. But I like Stephen Amell. I like and I love a lot of the characters on this show. So this was very bittersweet. This was a very interesting experience watching this episode. Especially the beginning. The beginning, we see this memorial documentary type footage of Oliver Queen saving his mother Moira from Slade Wilson in season two I remember that scene where Slade Wilson forces Oliver to choose between his mother and his sister reminiscent of what happened with Oliver and Sarah and and Shadow and 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 that was intense that was sad that was crazy and and it was interesting to see that here is an alternate earth, I guess, where Oliver was able to save his mother. And then you cut the you cut to Moira, who was talking about Oliver. And it's weird. I know that they explained that because of crisis, because of Oliver's sacrifice, that there are certain characters from alternate earths who have been merged to our earth. So seemingly Moira Queen is back from the dead. Now, okay, I think I have that understood, but I'm wondering now, like for example, Thea or any other character that was on Arrow, do they not remember the version where Moira died? Like, do they think that she's been alive this whole time also? That's what's confusing to me. I'm trying to get a grasp on which characters remember what, which timeline is the is the actual timeline this point forward. Most of the episode, we saw flashbacks of Oliver and Diggle, I assume from season one. At first, I was wondering if this is actual footage from season one, and they're just splicing it in, but I quickly noticed um, that it involved this this one character that Oliver... Put away, locked up. We go back and forth. I remember the earlier seasons of Arrow. I was very confused on whether or not Oliver killed criminals. Some episodes he would kill and it would be no big deal. And then there would be episodes where Oliver would get pissed at other characters for killing people. And he would he would lecture them on how wrong it was. Remember the Huntress? She's probably the one character who didn't come back in this finale. The Huntress. What the hell ever happened to her? Last, I, I remember she was in jail. Imprisoned. Probably still is. Poor girl. So, it was interesting that they had a storyline of Diggle trying to convince Oliver not to kill people anymore. Although, doesn't Diggle use guns when he goes out there in his mask and vigilante costume? Doesn't Wild Dog also use guns? Anyways, um, who cares at this point? It's the last episode. So the villain, the criminal that Oliver put away in the flashback, he comes back today and he kidnaps William, Oliver's son. And that becomes sort of the final mission is that the rest of the team, the rest of the heroes have to go save William. And they all want to do it for Oliver. They all want to pay him back for his sacrifice, for them saving, uh, Oliver saving their families like Diggle and Lila now they have both of their kids you get uh, a scene where Sarah Lance time travels to bring Mia from the future to the past because she wants Mia to be there for her dad's funeral 
Now, I'll be honest, I did not watch last week's episode, uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries. I didn't watch it. I didn't really care to watch it, especially once I found out what the actual plot is, how it's it was basically a backdoor pilot for the spinoff show that's coming. I don't care about the spinoff show. I don't care to watch it or follow it, so that's why I kind of skipped it. Maybe if I'm bored, I'll get to it. If anybody wants to hear me talk about that, maybe, just maybe. But as of right now, I don't know what what went on. I don't know. I didn't even know that Mia went back to the future. Like, when did that happen? So we, we see uh, Felicity return. That was a surprise. I... As much as I've had so many complaints of Felicity, as much as I've, I grew to hate her, honestly. I, I loved her in season one and season two, some of season three, but by the time her and Oliver became a full-fledged couple, by the time season four came along, I hated this character's effing guts. So, but you know what? Seeing her back here show up after not being in the season for eight or nine episodes, that was nice. It was nice to see the actress back. She belonged there. Say what you want to say about the character, even if you still hate her character. She needed to be here. It it wouldn't have felt right without her. We get Roy proposing to Thea, and thank God, thank God they fixed this. They tried to have Thea date like one or two other guys after Roy, and it never worked. I never bought it. I never thought her character should have been with anybody else, had chemistry with anyone else. I was glad that they did this. Yes, it was a little random out of nowhere. Yes, it was maybe a little forced because last we heard, Roy just up and left her randomly. <laughs> so now she just easily forgives him. So it just says, hey, 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 Roy. Promise that you won't just up and leave again. Oh, yes, the I promise. Okay. <laughs> but in all honesty, it was great to see the actress that plays Thea. It was great to see her back. I, I never liked that they got rid of her or didn't have her there for a couple seasons. Even Roy. A lot of these first, second, third season side characters I attached myself to. I cared so much more about them than I ever did wild dog yeah wild dog yeah renee is gonna become the mayor i buy that shit and dinah drake who just has the personality of sand <laughs> i i literally just don't find her or renee that interesting at all i don't think they belonged in the scene where they were shutting down the arrow cave because who are they <laughs> who cares we see a quick moment of Ragman showing up. That was nice, because Ragman, I know I was just crapping on some of the newer characters that showed up, and I still hold true to that, but Ragman was one of the few newer characters, one of the only newer characters that I was at least intrigued by, and I liked the actor. And I was curious to what his, his, his power set was, the darkness that also came with his character and the struggle between good and bad that he came from. Oliver saved him so they put him on the right track. And then they got rid of him. I, I heard it was because of the budget. They couldn't afford to do the Ragman character. But at the same time, why did you introduce him in the first place if that was the case? In any event, it was nice to see him back. Quentin Lance was one of the characters who, even though he was killed off, this crisis brought him back. Tommy Merlin was another character who was killed off. And man, he was killed off in season one. So this crisis undid his death as well. And I'm confused. He told Earth to Laurel that on his Earth, Laurel was his wife. Now, I don't know if that means that the Laurel who died was his wife or if he just came from a different Earth and that was that continuity. Because again, which things do, do our characters remember? If his Laurel, if he was married to his Laurel, then why is she dead if our Laurel died? Again, it's a little confusing. I'm still trying to figure it out. The last bit that we saw, or one of the last bits, was the funeral. This was nice. Uh, even though maybe the episode seemed a little disjointed from the back and forth, from the flashbacks, from from the the kidnapping of William from following the other characters and seeing which ones we still care about. It was nice to have everyone pay tribute to Oliver, not just as a character in the story, but just really, at the end of the day, it's Stephen Amell. 
It's the show. You're paying tribute to the show for launching this universe. As many as many gripes as I, as I have, as much as I think these shows still could be so much better, I have to credit Arrow and I have to credit and give credit for what they were able to do with this universe. It was great to see characters like Barry there, uh, Kara, all of these characters that, that, you know, they did. They did spin off from Arrow. They they do owe a lot of their success from Arrow and Stephen Amell. We even get a moment where Diggle gives the final word, which was nice. But we get a quick shot of him finding a Green Lantern ring. What the hell? <laughs> really? I know there was a ton of fan theories or maybe people just wanting Diggle to become a Green Lantern or Jon Stewart's Green Lantern. And that was always like a cool fan fiction thing. But they just made that canon. I'm confused. Is there a Hell Jordan? Is there a Jon Stewart? Because Diggle is not Jon Stewart. Diggle is Diggle. So he's just a Green Lantern now. I I saw that and I thought to myself, we're not going to get a show? With Diggle as Green Lantern? Man, that was more of an annoyance. Because now I want to see that. And I know I never will see that. Maybe some fans are, were happy to see it. Felicity having that moment where we finally saw where the monitor took her at the end of last season. She, I guess, I guess let herself die. And let the monitor take her to the afterlife where she was reunited with Oliver. I guess that was nice, but at the same time, I agree with her where it's like, wait, the afterlife, heaven is is the office? <laughs> All right. In any event, it was nice to see Oliver and Felicity, I guess, back together again. Overall, as a series finale, this wasn't great. It wasn't. No. We're talking about a show that went on for eight seasons and and the beginning of this episode, we already had our hero dead. So that made it a little awkward in some senses. I do like that we focus more on the characters that we did care about. We did focus more on on Roy and Thea, and we brought back some memorable faces. We we did pay tribute in, in, in a lot of good ways to the show. Uh, not great, not perfect, but I guess... Given the circumstances, given what they were able to do after Crisis, this was fine. It was decent. So guys, let me know in the comments below what did you think of the series finale of Arrow. Do you think it worked? Do you think it paid tribute well enough? Do you think it was a good close to this Arrow show? Or do you think it deserved better? Do you think it could have been better? What would you have done differently if you could? Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. That's it. That's it for Arrow. And again, bittersweet. Uh, you know, there's a part of me that will miss this show, at least the good parts of this show. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. Oh, yeah. Say it.